Hi everyone, today I want to share with you a revelation on the sin that is leading many Christians to hell. This is not a, a, a revelation that I received, but this is a revelation my husband received, but I want to share it because it's very, very important and because a lot of Christians are making the same mistakes and going to hell. So, so in this revelation, my husband just found himself in a state whereby he felt like he had just died. He, he had the knowledge that he had just died on earth and then he started to ascend. So he found himself ascending and then he realized that there were other people who were also ascending and they had just died on earth at the time. But then one thing that he realized was he saw a hill like a, like a mountain. And then on this mountain, there was a holy city on top of the mountain. And then to get to that city, you had to climb up stairs. But what he saw was the stairs were so beautiful. But on each stair, there was like a verse from the Bible that was written there. The stairway that was leading to the holy city was made of actual steps, but on each step, a Bible verse was inscribed. Each step had a Bible verse inscribed on it. And then as, and then another thing that he, he noticed was that there was an invitation from God to each person who lives on the earth. An invitation to come and live in heaven forever. An invitation for every person who has ever been born on the earth he realized that they all have an invitation to come up to where god is and live with him eternally and then he saw this invitation in form of what looked like strings that connected like from the holy city to the earth and then each string was connecting to one person who is on earth each, every person who is on earth had like a string that was connecting to them but then that string he understood it to be God's invitation to that person to come and spend eternity with him in heaven forever. So as he kept going together with the other people, the other souls that had just died on the earth, they arrived at the gates of heaven. But for you to enter heaven, there was a, a queue, there was like a long queue just outside the gates of heaven. And then only those who are qualified to enter could be allowed in him and other people knew that they had to join the queue and then they had to wait for their names to be checked in the book at the gate of heaven and to know whether or not they were going to be allowed in there and so like one thing that he noticed was some of the people who were in this queue a lot of people were very nervous because they were not sure if their names would be found in the book and if, you're, if your name is not found in the book, then you cannot be let into heaven, which means you have to go to hell, and then this is forever. So one thing that he was telling me is he felt, he didn't feel like he had died. Him and another man whom he was talking to, uh, another man whom he had realized that the man had just died, and then they were all there at, at, at the gates. They were all there at the gates of heaven. And then they were talking about it and saying, can you imagine that people on earth think that we are dead people on earth think we are actually dead because they actually felt very alive because death is not real really death it's just a separation from the physical body so the people who remain in the physical they'll see you as dead but you who, who you have just gone into the spiritual realm and everything is still as real to you and so they were talking about it and saying look people on earth think that we're dead and yet we are here. They don't know that we are here. And then the man was tell, was started to tell my husband that the people on earth were actually like preparing a, a, a coffin. Like he was telling him about the coffin. Like they were preparing the, this coffin to bury him in and everything. And then he was like, but that's not me. I'm not even there. I'm here. I'm alive. So when they were outside the gates of heaven, and then they knew that they had to join the queue. So... People kept coming and then their names were checked and everything and then the, it, though some people were let in but some people were not. So as my husband and all the other people were there 
waiting outside the gate. He suddenly became very anxious and nervous because he realized that there was one thing that could make him not to be able to enter into the gates of heaven. And the sin that was going to make him, to stop him from entering the gates of heaven was unforgiveness. There was somebody on earth whom he had had a disagreement with in a way whereby he, he even felt justified like to be angry with the person because the person is the one who had wronged him. And so he didn't think that, that that could be a big deal like to stop him from entering heaven because he felt like he was the one who was on the right and the person was the one on the wrong, but they had a disagreement. And following that disagreement, he did not forgive the person because he felt like he's the one who was offended. And so he, the, the person should, should come and apologize and then that's when he'll forgive the person. But he told me that in that moment, as he was waiting outside the gates for his name to be checked in the book at the gate, he felt extremely foolish. And then he was just thinking to himself, like, it's not worth it. It wasn't worth it for me to just to fail to forgive someone just because I feel I'm the one who was right and that person was wrong. That's how he felt. And then he was so filled with regret to know that this is forever because he knew that he was dead and there was no second chance. Because when it was happening, it was, he, he, he was actually convinced that he's actually dead and it's all happening. And so he couldn't believe that he had let himself to miss heaven just because of that one thing, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness in an instant where he was the one who was wronged. He was offended. They had a disagreement, but he was the one who felt like he was right. He was offended. And so he felt like he had a right to hold a grudge. But in that moment, he said that he realized that nothing on earth is worth missing heaven for. Whether you're the one who has been offended, whether you're the one on the right, whether it's really justified for you to be angry with someone. In that moment, when he stood before the gates of heaven, he knew that it wasn't worth it because it was going to cost him his eternal salvation. And then he was just wishing that he, he could just reverse everything and just forgive that person, regardless of whether the person ever regretted what they did or not, or whether the person even realized that how wrong they were. Because it was about eternity. And then as he kept waiting and waiting, and then suddenly he just woke up. And then he realized that he, he was still alive, he was still on earth. It was just a dream that God was giving him as a warning about unforgiveness. And when he woke up, he, he told me about it. And then he, he had to call the people whom he, he was still holding a grudge against and just make things right, regardless of how he was feeling, that he was the one who was right and they were wrong and the people were not sorry. But he realized like that all doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the person is not sorry for what they did. If you don't forgive them, you are holding a grudge. God cannot let you into heaven. And so he had to call them and, and ensure that he made things right with them. Because one thing that I, want, I just want to add very quickly, one thing that God told me about why it's so dangerous to have unforgiveness, this is what he told me. He told me if you're holding a grudge against someone, and then you die and you want me to, to take you into my kingdom and bring you to heaven. And then I also bring that person to heaven. You, want, you, 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 you had a grudge against them. Okay, death doesn't change you. Death, the, your feelings are death. That's it forever. And so you have a grudge against someone. And then God takes you into heaven with your grudge against the person whom you, whom you have refused to forgive. Are you going to be happy to see them in heaven? To heaven, he brings you to heaven. Are you going to be happy? You are still going to want to continue the grudge because once you die, your feelings cannot change. 
if you had not forgiven someone you cannot forgive them in death the place to forgive is here on earth once you die it's too late it means forever you will never forgive someone and if you go to heaven it means you will bring a grudge in heaven okay meaning you cannot live in peace and that is impossible and that's why jesus told me then it means you have to go to hell because you cannot hold a grudge in heaven we need to examine our hearts we need to ask the lord to help us to help us to know and realize if really we have forgiven people and the easiest way is when you remember that person who offended you how do you feel does it bring you pain and if it still does you need to go on your knees and ask the lord to help you to let it go if you don't forgive someone on earth forever you will never forgive them it's impossible to forgive them after death that's why even the martyrs even Stephen, when they, were, when they were stoning him to death, he had to pray and say, and say, Lord, forgive them, forgive these people. They don't know what they're doing. He didn't have a grudge against them. He was asking for mercy for the people. And yet those people were, were stoning him. They were in the process of killing him. They were not sorry. They thought what they're doing was right. They, they didn't regret what they were doing, but he was saying, lord forgive them they didn't know they don't know what they're doing even our lord jesus he did the same when he was on the cross he said lord forgive them father forgive them they don't know what they're doing and he's expecting us to do the same i know it's hard i have been there i know it's difficult but we need to cry out to god if if possible go in prayer and fasting ask the lord lord i want you to to let it go you know you know you have unforgiveness if when you think of someone you you think of them you just want bad things to happen to them because of what they did to you then you know you have unforgiveness you have a grudge you need to go on your knees and ask the lord for forgiveness start praying for the lord to bless them and let it be from your heart and as you pray the lord is faithful but don't hold unforgiveness don't hold a grudge whether they are sorry or not that's not your business you just have to make things right with your heavenly father because your salvation is very precious.